Well, good morning. What a uh, wonderful morning of greetings we've been having on our Facebook chat this morning. Uh, it is great to see so many people here from so many places. So welcome to Emerald. Um, my name is Jen. If you haven't said good morning yet, either on the online platform or on Facebook, let us know where you're watching from. We um, are astounded by the people who are joining us week after week and we love having you as part of the St Luke's family. Who would have thought I'd get to play with my phone just before service every Sunday? Who would have thought? This is great. It's wonderful to be here worshipping together, bringing the, the love of God among us all in this way. Praise God for the technology that we have available to us. Friends, we'll get our service underway. The Lord be with you. Isn't it great to be here? What a beautiful morning. We're going to start our service with a beautiful song. The old hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. beautiful way to start worship. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
Let's pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secret is hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Treasury Project verse for this week comes from Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. And we pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and evermore defend us from all adversities for you live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. We'll go to our readings. Reading for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 to 13. Finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Live in spirit. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with holy, a holy kiss. All the saints send their greetings. This is the word of the Lord. Today's reading is Matthew twenty eight, sixteen to twenty. The eleven disciples went to the hill in Galilee, where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, even though some of them doubted. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all people everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptise them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you and I will be with you always to the end. That is the word. Thanks, Perg and Mer, for uh, recording those readings for us this week. Isn't it great to see so many of our family uh, involved in, in our worship together? Now, I've put our Friday Funny up on the, um, up on, on the sermon board with us today uh, as we work through today's sermon. I'm going to pray before we get underway. Heavenly Father, God of all grace, as we open the scriptures together this morning, Lord, I pray that you will speak through the words that I use, that, Lord, you will open our hearts and our minds, that you will give us a softness, that you will make us ready to hear your true living promises. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. So, do you know what comes after Pentecost? We had Pentecost last weekend. Do you know what comes after Pentecost? In the church calendar, Trinity Sunday. It's the only day in the Christian calendar which is dedicated to doctrine rather than to a historical event. Our readings today are unashamedly Trinitarian in nature, which is probably a good thing on Trinity Sunday. They're only short. But as Diane often says to me in a Bible study on a Monday night, when it's a short reading, it's usually a huge study. And today is no exception to that rule. In one sense, our faith, the Christian faith, is so beautifully simple. In the end, we're Bible people. It's all laid out for us in the Bible. But then 
as we dig deeper, profound mysteries start opening up beyond our human understanding, beyond our con con um, ability co to conceive. And it requires us to trust God in faith. On Trinity Sunday, our readings offer us both. So I'm going to draw on both of these readings today. So open up at Matthew 28, verse 16, and put a finger or a, a bookmark or one of your bills, speeding fines, put that in, in the Bible there, and then flip over to 2 Corinthians 13, verse 11, and put another marker in there, because we're going to go back and forward a little bit today. And whilst you're doing that, I'm going to talk about what we're going to look at. We're going to be looking um, at the complexity, simplicity, and beauty of the Trinity. We're going to be looking at the comfort and challenge of the grace. And we're going to look at the command that has been laid out before us. So let's start by looking at the doctrine of the Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity goes to the very core of our faith, the very essence of God. Matthew 28, 19 resonates with our overarching theme for this year of making disciples. It reads... Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So let's stop right there. Name. Singular, not plural. One being, but three persons, co-equal and co-eternal. We know this, don't we? We know this. But in reality, most of us, when we think about it, um, when we think about it, struggle to understand. And that's okay. After all, if our God was small enough for us to fully understand, he would not be big enough for us to worship. We confess this mystery each week in our creeds, especially in the Athanasian Creed, which is a foundational document of the Anglican faith. It's been found in every Anglican prayer book since the Book of Common Prayer. And it's on our website. If you haven't read it, have a look in the prayer book, have a look on the website. But have we, have we truly pondered these truths, have we thought about how we would explain them if we're asked? I've heard of lots of ways that in our humanness we try to bring this profound mystery into our level of understanding. And instead of trying to run through those, I thought we'd show a, a bit of a humorous look at some of the ways that we know of, that, that we've heard throughout our time. So I'm going to pass across the lot to Colin to give us a video. Okay, Patrick, tell us a bit more about this Trinity thing. Yeah, Patrick, tell us. But remember that we're simple people without your fancy education and books and learning, and we're hearing about all of this for the first time, so try to keep it simple. Okay, Patrick? Yeah, real simple, Patrick. Sure, there are uh, three persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yet there is only one God. Don't get what you're saying here, Patrick. Not picking up what you're laying down here, Patrick. Could you use an analogy, Patrick? Sure. Uh, the Trinity is like uh, water and how you can find water in three different forms. Liquid and ice and vapor. That's modalism, Patrick! What? Modalism, an ancient heresy confessed by teachers such as Noetus and Sibelius, which espouses that God is not three distinct persons, but that he merely reveals himself in three different forms. This heresy was clearly condemned in Canon 1 at the First Council of Constantinople in 381 AD, and those who confess it cannot rightly be considered a part of the Church Catholic. Come on, Patrick! Yeah, get it together, Patrick! Uh, okay, uh, then the Trinity is like uh, the sun in the sky, where you have the star and the light, and the heat. Oh, Patrick. Come on, Patrick. That's Arianism, Patrick. 
Arianism? Yes, Arianism, Patrick. A theology which states that Christ and the Holy Spirit are creations of the Father and not one in nature with him. Exactly like how heat and light are not the star itself, but are merely creations of the star. That's a bad analogy, Patrick. You're the worst, Patrick. All right, sorry. The Trinity is like... Uh, this three-leaf clover here. I'm gonna stop you right there, Patrick. Yeah, hold your horses, Patrick. You're about to confess partialism. Partialism? Yes, partialism. A heresy which asserts that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not distinct persons of the Godhead, but are different parts of God, each composing one-third of the divine. And who confesses the heresy of partialism? The first season of the cartoon program Voltron, where five robot lion cars merge together to form one giant robot samurai, Obviously. I've never heard of Voltron. Of course you haven't. It's not going to exist for another 1,500 years now, Patrick. Yeah, get with the program, Patrick. I mean, really, Patrick. All right, I'll try again. Uh, the Trinity is like how the same man can be a husband and a father and an employer. Modalism again. All right, then it's like the three layers of an apple. Partialism revisited. Fine. The Trinity is a mystery which cannot be comprehended by human reason, but is understood only through faith and is best confessed in the words of the Athanasian Creed, which states that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance, that we are compelled by the Christian truth to confess that each distinct person is God and Lord, and that the deity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-equal in majesty. Well, why didn't you just say that, Patrick? Yeah, quit beating around the bush, Patrick. <laughs> Perhaps it's just my warped sense of humour, but I really like that one. You know, you know, Matthew was a tax collector. He knew that there was a difference between one and three. Paul was a learned scholar. He knew that there was a difference between one and three. Luke, a physician and a historian, he knew that there was a difference between one and three. Even the fisherman, Peter, knew that there was a difference between one and three. These were not airheads lacking learning, yet they stood unwavering in their understanding of the triune God. Why? To answer this, we first must ask a question. Why do we love? The Apostle John tells us in 1 John 4, we love because he first loved us. In all other worldviews, life precedes love. Only in the Christian worldview does love and communication and relationship precede life. It is innate within us. It's a longing for relationship, a longing for unity in our diversity. I believe that it is this longing which has set off the protests that we're seeing around our world in the last week or so. Black lives do matter because we are all children of God, made in his image, loved eternally. And to see that violated makes us bellow with rage like Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus because this is not the design. Death and violence are against creation. It's against the order of God. We're created for love, for communication and for joy. And we see this truth right back in Genesis where we see love and joy and community and fellowship contained in the Godhead right from the beginning. Unity in diversity. As my friends from Future Hope would say, hashtag relationship. It's a truth that is so compelling that it can only exist because it first existed in the one who created. 
No sophisticated mathematician need to tell the New Testament writers that one and three are not the same. What they have written for us is not some theoretical religiosity. They had experienced it. They had witnessed it. You know, they had witnessed Jesus praying with the Father. They had witnessed the Father speak at Jesus' baptism at the Mount, and at the Mount of Transfiguration. They had themselves been filled with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Friends, the Christian faith is an experiential faith. It's a faith birthed and bathed in relationship. And the New Testament writers are calling us to experience this love and relationship in our lives today and in our churches today. 2 Corinthians 4.14 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Those of us who are rusted on old Anglicans, we know this to be called the grace, don't we? The first time I experienced the saying of the grace was at a church meeting. The minister announced that uh, we would close the meeting with the grace. And I had no idea what was going on because there was no food to be had. Then they all started speaking as one melodiously, effortlessly, and with such meaning. And as a new Christian, I wondered how they knew what to say. And I squirmed as they looked intently in each other's eyes and in mine. I must have looked like a scared, confused little rabbit, but they simply smiled. Over time, I came to find real comfort in these words. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, unsought, unmerited, long before we existed. Jesus died for us. He decided to take our sin on his shoulders and give us his righteousness. We don't have to work for it. We don't really have to ask for it. He just gave it to us. That, my friends, is grace. Jesus says, I know you don't know me, but I know you and I love you. Here. Take this cleansing. Have my riches, my perfection. Let me give you eternity with God in heaven. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. The word agape is similar in meaning to grace. It is an undeserved love. And when you see the wonderful creation that the Father has designed for us, that is undeserved love. When you see the people who want nothing to do with God enjoying a beautiful sunset, that is undeserved love. When you Enjoy the produce of the land, the riches of his creation, or even the finest amenities. Or when the rain falls and the rainbow sets in the sky, that is undeserved love. When you, when you see this, that is love. But the greatest love of all was when the Father sent his Son, his only Son, Jesus, to die for us. If someone asked me to give my son's life 
for someone else that I love to take on their diseases, to take on their brokenness, even though I know my son would go to heaven, I wouldn't be able to do it. Think. Think about the love and the sacrifice that it must have been for God, the Father, to send his only son to die for us, to take our punishment, to walk in our place of judgment. What selfless love, what endless grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The word for fellowship is used throughout the New Testament in a variety of ways, but the main meaning is to share something in common with someone, often in an intimate way. You know, there are some people who uh, you just love to be around. You know, when they, their very presence just brightens your day. That, that feeling is just a taste of what Peter, James and John felt in the presence of God on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yeah, they, they didn't want to leave. And that is the experience that Paul wanted the Corinthians and us to know. To know the joy and completeness and presence of God and to have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us always. To share this in common. When the Holy Spirit enters our lives, it's like a light being switched on in a dark room. The grace and love of of God come shining into our hearts and brighten our lives. The work of the Holy Spirit is as important in our lives as the work of Jesus and of God the Father. If he didn't switch the light on for us, we would live in a world of darkness and fear and despair. But we're not children of darkness. We are children of the light. Regardless of COVID-19, regardless of the riots, regardless of whatever rages around us, we have God's peace in our hearts because we have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And as I said earlier, I've come to find real comfort in the words of the grace. But as I've matured as a Christian, I've also become challenged by them. In our Corinthians passage today, Paul also asks us to live out these words. Verse 11, look at that with me. He's asked us to be reconciled with each other and with God, working as a family to the greater common good, to bring about full usefulness of the Christian family by supplying what is missing. To comfort one another in the truth and love of God. To be like-minded. This excludes outright rebellion and conflict. When we are like-minded towards Christ, then we will be like-minded towards others. We'll be unselfish transparent and supportive. We are to live in peace. This was Paul's goal for the Corinthians and it's his goal for the church and for Christians today. This takes grace on our part, love on our part and an intentional togetherness on our part finding unity in our diversity as we see existing in the Godhead, in eternally in the Trinity. And then we're called to teach others to do the same. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them 
to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Friends, the opportunity to spread the good news of Jesus Christ is a gift from a generous God. So how do we do this? We are recipients of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. We don't do this in our own strength. We share what he has given us. We share our experience. We teach what he has taught. Matthew 23, 37 and 39 reads, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Love your neighbour as yourself. So be reconciled to those who are younger in the faith or who are different to you. Supply what is missing for them to bring them to maturity in Christ. Comfort and guide in the love and truth of God. Have the word of God, the Bible, as the compass and foundation for agreeing in Christ. Be unselfish. Be transparent. Be supportive. Live in peace. It seems a tall order, doesn't it? Until we read the end of verse 20. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. No one should feel ill-equipped or lacking anything to be a disciple maker. When we go as our Lord commands, then we do not go alone. We are encouraged. We are equipped by the Holy Spirit who will do what we cannot do ourselves. Friends, we're all from different places. We've all got different backgrounds. We have different professions, different gifts, different hobbies, different ideas. Sometimes it's hard to live together with all of our differences. But remember, we aren't just here to drink coffee and chat. An amazing thing has happened to us. The same God who worked together to create us and die for us has sent his spirit to be in our hearts, to unite us in a common belief and to join us together and empower us to share that belief with the world. We find unity in our diversity because that is the way of God. We have a common confession. We have a common spirit. And through him, we can live in peace. Friends, I'm going to leave this here for now. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We're going to sing now the creed. So turn up your your volume and let's sing together this I believe.
and Sandy will bring our prayers for us today. Holy One, thank you for the blessing of this day. As we read, reflect, pray and sing, we ask for your blessing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we ask for your strength and direction in our world. We pray for calm and peaceful understanding to enter the hearts and minds of all people. For thoughtful and caring leadership where the ravages of the pandemic continue. We give you thanks for the relatively low rates of infection and death in Australia and New Zealand. We pray for all those affected in any way, directly or indirectly. We know, dear Lord, that every one of us is precious to you and pray that your loving example will be apparent to every human being. We continue to remember that violence, oppression, poverty and pollution continue in our world, even as they are currently overtaken by recent events. We give thanks for all who continue to work for the good of others in whatever capacity. May we all be mindful of our blessings and of the needs of those around us. We ask your blessing on all who suffer, especially any known to us. We give thanks for the privilege of technology, which allows us to be together at this time and for the certain knowledge that you will always hear us when we pray. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come to our time of confession. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of our hearts. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have gone our own way and rejected your will for our lives. We are sorry for our sins and we turn away from them. For the sake of your Son, who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you in every way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Amen. Friends, we are the body of Christ and his spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We move now to our next song, 10,000 Reasons. Turn up the volume. i 
The Lord be with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, making us in your image. We praise you for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and rising to new life offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore we lift our voices and praise you, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now, gracious God, we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine and pray that we who receive them in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, according to our Saviour's word, in remembrance of his suffering and death, may share in his body and blood. On the night before he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and when he had given th you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We who are many are one body in Christ, for we all share in the one bread. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We eat this bread and drink this wine to proclaim the death of the Lord. We do this until he returns. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, as, as we recall his saving death and glorious resurrection, may we who share these gifts be renewed in your Holy Spirit and united in the body of your Son. Bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, there to feast at your table and join in your eternal praise. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread in remembrance that Christ died for us. We feed on him in our hearts by, thank, by faith with thanksgiving. We drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for us and we are thankful. God of mercy, may we who have shared in this holy meal know your forgiveness in our lives, bring your reconciliation to others and be a sign of your wholeness in this broken world. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us the grace to go with thankful, thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. Amen. We sing now, what a beautiful name. Yeah. 
beautiful, powerful, wonderful name. So, quick messages. Uh, we are still going through planning for returning to church in person. In fact, we've got a parish council meeting this afternoon to discuss that very thing. So parish council members, don't forget to either zoom in or come into our socially distanced area in the hall and we'll discuss how we go about doing everything that's required to keep people safe in our environment. Uh, so coming up online, I've just um, started do, putting the links for the Christianity Explored program. We've got a few families that are getting organised for baptism, so they're going to be part of that. Uh, we've got some uh, members of our church who would like to explore a bit deeper the truths of our faith, so they're looking at joining that. So let me know if you want to get involved. You will watch a video um, and then we will have some discussion groups. So it's going to be a fantastic way of doing this uh, program, which we would normally do together, socially distanced. So it's going to be fantastic. Um, don't forget, on the 24th of June, we have the GAFCONUS Australasia webinar. Uh, part of it's coming live from Emerald. It's super exciting. Um, it's going to be a great celebration, some fantastic Bible teaching it's totally free, so get online and sign up for that. It's going to be fantastic. Um, on the 18th of July, we're going to have Synod via Zoom. Um, so, you know, Synod reps, please be aware that is coming up. Um, and don't forget also that we have our giving options, a variety of them, for online. Our Treasury Project Memory Verse. Again, I, I, I go on about this. There is chocolate available if you can give me this week's verse or last week's verse in some sort of creative way. Show me how you're remembering the verses. Last week's winner, Jen, had it stuck over uh, her kettle where she spends time making tea and coffee during the day. So well done, Jen. That was fantastic. It just sent me a photo through. Uh, get creative. Show me how you can remember it. Do finger painting with the kids, whatever it takes. Get involved with that. We are embedding God's word on our heart so that we can share that out, share our faith with others. That's about it from the messages from me today. So we're going to go to our final song now. No other name.
peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Friends, go in peace now to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.